Guys like me were brought up to follow codes. Hey, jerk off. What'd you say? What? Look at you guys, you are like the Mount Rushmore of Newark. This is amazing. Michael, congratulations, you're phenomenal. Um, I imagine that this was just a major labor of love for you and a, a tribute to your father. Tony Soprano is one of the most iconic characters of all time and we see him in you, but not in just like the resemblance of course, but like in the mannerisms, the way you breathe, the way you hold yourself, just everything. How important was that to you? And was there a lot of pressure? So happy to hear that. It, it took a long time to develop those things. It was really important because the movie is sort of a departure from the Tony that we know in the series. It's very different and sensitive and, and it's, it's different. So I knew that if I could physically express the Tony that everyone knew, I would have more leeway to sort of create a completely different Tony emotionally. So I really wanted to, to portray that. Alessandro, Leslie, Sopranos fans have waited 15 years for this moment. It is finally happening. What has it been like for you to be a part of this cinematic history? I feel like we've been waiting 15 years for this movie to come out. <laughs> it's here! <laughs> well, a big part of the legacy of that show is the incredible ensemble. It was a murderer's row. I um, hoped that we could, as a unit, uh, uh, add to that. Besides David's fantastic writing, it might be that, wow, what a great group of people that they assembled to tell that story. Money don't get everything, it's true. What it don't get, I can't use. I want money. People really, really like this, this show because I didn't watch it, but you don't really have to. This movie stands on its own. And every now and then there's a character from what we did, who grows and there's a character there, but the only similarity was they looked a certain way. But, but again, it's really, it does stand on its own as a movie. Tell myself a son. Hi, Christopher, hello. Hello. Oh. Oh. Okay, all right. All it's right. like a scam or something. Some babies, when they come into the world, know all kinds of things from the other side. It completely does, which I think is a testament to David Chase. Up for you guys if you could just talk to me about what is it like working with a genius like a true genius i agree i think he's a genius <laughs> i remember we were at a dinner and i was talking with corey stoll and i said to, to him uh i i feel that i'm i'm doing nothing i, I want to do more and he said that's when a script is written in a good way you feel that you are not doing enough but it's just because you know your lines are perfect it's really exhilarating to to play pretend it's really really funny what more do i know i'm a murderer you have directed nine episodes of the sopranos so obviously you know the world but a prequel to the sopranos was that daunting for you was there a lot of pressure yeah a hilarious amount of pressure david chase had taken the gangster movie and put it on the small screen and made it contemporary and sort of let's make really sure that we're carrying the spirit of sopranos with us there is no shortage of mob nicknames in this movie if your families were to give you a nickname what would it be my grandfather gave me one when I was a kid, uh, and I think about him a lot when I think about Harold, but he used to call me Speedo. Which has nothing to do with the bathing suit choice, correct? Now, well, you know, now as a, as a grown man, we could, you know. It's up to interpretation. <laughs> Messy, I don't know. Like, just, I don't know, some sort of like insult to <laughs> not cleaning up my room. <laughs> I remember when I was a little kid, they used to call me tuna fish. <laughs> That's good. Oh, That's great. Good. Awesome. Um, congratulations, Speedo, Messi, and Big Tuna. I will see you guys later. <laughs> Thank you. Take it easy. As far as your nephew goes. I'm listening. Stay out of his life. <laughs>